My next tack is for my fellow short girls. Just look how much taller and more elongated I look in that photo. Hey babes, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day so far. Today's video is one that is very highly requested. It has been asked of me for the last like month or two and today I am finally doing it. Today's video is all about the tips, tricks, and hacks on how I shoot and edit my Instagram pictures. I'm going to spill all my secrets. I'm going to show you guys what I do and how I do it and I'm going to show you guys how you can do it too. I personally am very proud of my Instagram feed. I feel like it's very cohesive and the colors look nice together. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, this is a shameless self plug because this is all about Instagram. So if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, here is my Instagram. You guys should go check it out. Very proud of it. If you guys enjoy this video and you want to see more like this, don't forget to subscribe down below and join the family. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. You guys know because I get a lot of questions on this. What I shoot my photos on are a Canon 5D with a 50 millimeter lens, the Canon 6D with whatever lens my husband throws on. Usually it's like a 16 to 35. The Canon G7X, which is an awesome vlogging camera. I talk about it all the time. And the last thing I take my photos on is the iPhone 8 Plus. Tip number one, the best time to shoot photos where you look the best and the lighting is the best is either very early in the morning like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., right when the sun comes up, or during golden hour, which is about an hour before sunset where you have that beautiful golden glow. Another reason it's so great to shoot early in the morning is if you're in a touristy spot like the Eiffel Tower. If you wake up early, most people aren't out early, so if you're trying to get that perfect picture where no one's in the background, go early in the morning. Tip number two, if you are shooting during the day where the sun is kind of harsh and you keep ending up with these like dark shadows on your face and it's just, it's not looking good. What you should do to avoid those harsh shadows is stand under some shade because if the sun is casting right onto your face, you're gonna end up with harsh lines and shadows and it just does not look as good as compared to when you're standing in the shade and you have nice even lighting. Tip number three, when it comes down to taking photos, I feel like the most awkward and difficult part is figuring out how to pose. What do you do with your hands? How should your hair be? Do you smile? Do you not smile? So if you find yourself dealing with this situation all the time when you take photos, what you can do is start a Pinterest board with pose ideas. This tip is super helpful because if you have an entire Pinterest board of pose ideas, when you get stuck next time shooting a photo, all you have to do is scroll through that Pinterest board of ideas and then boom, you know how to pose and it's less awkward. Tip number four, patience and persistence. Sometimes it takes a ton of different takes and a bunch of trial and error. Seriously, sometimes to get that perfect shot, it can take a cool minute. If you feel uncomfortable taking pictures in public, but you want that perfect shot, you just have to go for it. You just have to pretend nobody's around 100%. It's just you and whoever's taking the picture. And you just have to ignore it. It's our love fern. If you're just having fun with them and just completely zone out everybody else, you will get that perfect shot. Now I have some hacks for you guys. If you're not liking how you're looking at any of your pictures, you look too stiff or rigid, or you just kind of look kind of boring, like your posing is getting repetitive, mix it up, try something different, add some movement, add a prop, dance around, jump, spin, twirl, like throw your hair up, throw your arms up, and just move around. You add just a little bit of fun and some real life to a photo, it will seriously just level up your photo and just make it so much more dynamic. My next hack is for my fellow short girls. Yes, 5'2 club, anybody else here? If you find that you always look shorter in pictures and kind of just shrunken, have your photographer take your pictures from a lower angle. This honestly is essential if whoever is taking your pictures is taller than you. Like my husband is taller than me and he takes pretty much all my pictures. And this used to be a major problem because he would take pictures of me and he's taking it from his eye level and it's looking down on me. When a camera is pointing down and looking down at you, it's always going to just squash your frame. So the way you can avoid looking like a junior mint is have your photographer take the camera and shoot the photo from a lower angle. The lower the angle, the taller you're going to look. I would suggest first having them try shooting from chest level, then next hip level, then kind of maybe pop in a squat, shooting down from there, and just kind of adjusting and figuring out what your best angle is. My one piece of advice for this hack though, is when someone is shooting from a lower angle, you just gotta be careful of that double chin. Because if your head starts tilting lower as they're shooting down, 
you just you might end up with that double or triple chin. And my final hack before we move on to editing, actually another way to look taller in photos. Another way to look taller is to elongate your body. Stretch up your arms, your legs. One tip that really helps me is crossing one leg in front of the other and pointing a toe. That makes me look like 9,000% taller. Like for example, take a look at this photo I took. And this was after I crossed my legs one in front of the other. Just look how much taller and more elongated I look in that photo as compared to the first one where I look more just squat. Elongate your body by stretching out your arms, your legs, pointing your toes, and especially crossing one leg in front of the other. That is my go-to tip. Put your arms up and you cross your legs, you look like 20 feet tall. It's kind of awesome. Moving on to editing. <laughs> What I solely edit my photos on is Lightroom. So Lightroom is an Adobe app. And what is Lightroom, babe? Lightroom is an app. It's on the desktop, but they also have it as a free app on the phone that you don't need any subscription for. And so you can just shift the color and the saturations and the lightness and everything else about anything in your photo. Yeah, so if I thought his green shirt was ugly and I wanted to change it to like a dark green or a more like yellow green, or if I just wanted to make it like gray, I could do that. It's really crazy the power that Lightroom has and I really, really love editing in Lightroom. For 10 bucks a month, you can get Lightroom and Photoshop and 20 gigabytes of cloud storage so that if you are on your computer, it's automatically on your phone and you don't have to waste time worrying about file transfers, especially if you're on Android or something. Or if you have no interest in doing any of the Photoshop stuff and you just want Lightroom, then you can do the same price for Lightroom without Photoshop and you get a terabyte of cloud storage, which is, which is so, so much pictures. space. The way I edit all my photos is I have a few go-to presets that I use that I develop. If you guys don't know what a preset is, it's basically like a custom filter that someone makes on Lightroom. I'm going to show you guys how I edit two photos. One is going to be edited on the desktop version of Lightroom, and the other one is going to be edited on the mobile app. So first we're going to start with the DSLR photo. What we're going to do first is of course open Lightroom. As you guys can see, it just pulls up a gallery look of all the photos you add in. And we're just going to start off with this photo. The first thing I notice is that it's a very blue, green, shadowy type of photo, and that's not at all the type of look I like to go for. So how I start my edits is I go up to the top right hand corner and I hit this little edit button, pulls up this whole thing. So when you're in Lightroom, you have the choice to tweak all these different things and adjust it however you like. There's so many options, but the way I like to do it, just because I have a very certain type of look I like to go for, is I go down to presets and like I explained earlier, presets are like custom filters. So these are all the custom filters I built for myself to get the look I like with various lighting settings and different conditions. I actually have a preset specifically for this blue and green look and it's called Sunshine Queen. So we're just gonna click on that. And as you guys can see with just one click, it made the photo pretty much perfect for the look I like to go for. The only thing I noticed is that it's a little overexposed. So I'm just going to adjust that down and there we go. And to give you guys a before and after, before, after. And then to export a photo, you go up to the top right hand corner, you click the little square with the up arrow, hit save to, and then you just save wherever you save photos. Now back to the gallery, we're gonna choose one more photo to edit. How about we do a sunset photo? I really love this photo of Wade. I think he looks so handsome. I'm like, hey, that's my husband, look at him. So this photo was taken at sunset, but the sunset, it's just, it's not really popping. So I actually created a preset specifically for sunsets to make them pop in. The preset I made for sunset photos is called California Dreamin'. So I'm just gonna click on that. And the only thing I notice is that it's a little bit warm. So I'm just gonna bring the temperature down. Anyways, I'm about happy with this edit. So this one is good to go. I seriously love these presets I made so much. They make editing so quick and they make photos look so good. Dark, poppin', dark, poppin'. Looks so good. Moving on to editing in Lightroom Mobile, I edit pretty much the same way using presets, but the way you use presets is actually different. And we're going to go down to the bottom right hand corner where there's a little plus sign, and we're gonna click on that to import our photo. So I'm going to use a photo that I took on my iPhone, and I'm just gonna pick this one right here. So the way you use presets on Lightroom Mobile is you go to the preset files that you've loaded into your Lightroom library. And the preset I wanna use is Sunshine Queen, so I'm going to click on that. Once I have that file open, I'm going to go to the top right-hand corner where you see three dots. 
and I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna pull up this menu that says copy settings. You'll click okay. Once you have the photo open that you're editing, you're going to go back up to the top right hand corner with the three dots and you're gonna click on that, hit paste settings, and there you go. So I do notice that this photo came out super, super warm with this preset. So I'm just gonna go into temperature, it's under color, and I'm just gonna slide the temperature dial down. I want my skin to look a little bit more saturated. So in that box, I'm going to go to the top right hand corner where it says mix and then a color circle. And I'm gonna click on that. Then I'm going to open the color orange and then just slide up the saturation dial. After that, I really like the picture and I'm just gonna show you guys a before and after. So here's before and here is after. To save the photo, you just go up to the top right hand corner with the export button. You click that and then you save it however you wanna save it. And that's how I edit photos on my phone. Also, look at this really cute puppy that I saw the other day, also edited with my presets, but oh my gosh, she's so cute. So sometimes, depending on lighting conditions, the preset might make the photo a little too warm, so I'll adjust the warmth. Sometimes the exposure is too bright or too dark, so I'll adjust that. And the final thing that I find myself adjusting when it comes to presets is I'll just adjust the orange saturation. Usually that is maybe too dark or too light, too orange. So I'll just kind of slide that dial and adjust it from there. After that, the photo is pretty much done. And that is why I love my presets so much. It makes editing so quick and so easy. If you guys love my presets like I do, and you wanna pick up some so you guys can edit your photos in the same way, super quick and super easy, I am selling my presets. I am so excited because I have worked on these for so long and I wanted them to be beautiful and usable on so many different kinds of photos. So I worked super hard on them and I'm so excited to be sharing them with you guys. So if you guys are interested in buying my presets, I'll have the link down below, six presets for $50. So if you guys want to pick those up, all you guys have to do is go to the link in the description box. So if you're trying to grow your brand, grow your feed, you want a cohesive look. One, just because it looks better as a brand. And two, because you really gain a lot more followers having a more cohesive feed. Anyways, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys have any questions about anything I mentioned, just let me know in the comment section. I'll go through. I answer almost all of my comments. If you guys are going to VidCon, let me know because I will be there and I would love to meet you guys. And I think that's kind of it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and fun and you guys learned a lot. I love you so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye. You know what I named the fern? What'd you name the love fern? Fernando. <laughs>